Twig is dead. Long live web components. Um, I just named it that so that I could troll Morton, um, you know, because he'd been working so hard at getting Twig into um, into Drupal eight, and um, I I actually think that um, you know adding web components to to like Drupal nine maybe um, would be not something that would necessarily replace Twig. It would be more like augment it. I would think of somehow, um, but that. That's what I'm gonna have. I want to have like a big conversation with people about stuff because I don't actually have like a lot of really good answers. I have a lot of really good questions, right? So um, I know that there are a bunch of people who are not able to attend Austin and want to see videos of all the core conversations. Um, those people are going to be really disappointed with this recording because um, about five minutes into it, I'm going to stop talking into the mic and just talking with everybody. You don't need to line up to have the conversation with me and talking to the mic. We're just going to be talking all at once. Um, that's what I envision, sort of old school core conversation. Um, wow, that's really annoying. That <laughs> Let me stop it from doing that. OK. Um, but yeah. Uh, um, so I, I told people that I would give a super brief intro to web components just so we're all on the same page, even if you don't know anything about web components, right? Um, so <laughs> the, the, I've got these, some resources here. Um, CSS tricks, there's an article you can read. This is a great article. Um, um, it really gave a really good overview of everything that goes. Um, webcomponents.org um, is probably the best place you can go right now to, to keep current with things that are going on with web components. Um, and then the, um, Mark Sonnenbaum told me about this thing called uh, React that Facebook just recently did. Um, and it's not web components. In fact, it's sort of explicitly trying to be an alternative to web components because they're not quite sure that web components make sense because of the DOM-heavy nature of, um, of, of doing web components it requires use of the DOM, and the DOM is very sort of heavy, heavy system compared to a very lightweight JavaScript system which they built with React. Um, I think Mark's going to come back. He was, you had to go to barbecue for lunch, so he's going to be late. <laughs> um, and then, like, if you guys have more resources, I'll just, like, add them to this slide and then post the slides later. Um, but, uh, so, here's webcomponents.org. Um, if you went to my talk yesterday about design components, um, I basically just describe web components as the spec authors sort of getting together and saying, hey, you know, web developers really like templating systems. You know, there's handlebars and there's PHP and, you know, even ASP and whatever. Uh, they like templating systems and we, we should really add that natively to the HTML spec itself so that you can um, basically specify a, um, you know, a sort of snippet of HTML instead of a page of HTML, which is kind of what's required right now as far as the spec goes, uh, you have these like snippets of HTML and JavaScript and CSS that are sort of combined into this thing uh, called a web component, um, and then you can use those as templates to, um, you know, insert your actual data into those those web components, those those this templating system, and it's it's built sort of natively into the uh, the HTML spec. Um, so um, webcomponents.org gives a really good high-level uh, overview of the different specs of this because um, like a lot, like the CSS spec is now like eight specs, right? Um, they're doing the same thing with, with web components, so there's these different parts of it. Uh, custom elements is the way that you, you specify a web component and then you actually tell the system that you're, you're going to name it this tag and then you can use uh, that tag name, you know, the oh god, oh god, why didn't the client listen to me about carousels tag, right, to, to encapsulate your carousel, right. Um, HTML imports are basically um, um, a, a way, and it's that particular spec is like not implemented at all in the browser, so you can sort of see on the left here, HTML imports, not so much, um, but it's a way to um, specify like an external resource, external to the current page, that hey, that's where my my uh, my templates are, right? Um, and then the shadow DOM. 
Um, this thing, of course, is is already implemented in in all the browsers um, and is um, like the way the video tag and, and a lot of other th widgets are actually implemented um, inside uh, the browser. So. Um, um, yeah, like that's my entire talk about web components right now. <laughs> um, and um, in in Drupal, we've 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 come a long way from just uh, the beginning of the system. We had a dot theme file that um, had raw PHP in it, basically to insert HTML into the system. Um, then we went to a system called X template, and finally PHP template, and now Twig, um, and um, I, I really, I'm interested in, in what people think about how do we get uh, this new technology, this new tech, uh, templating system that's in HTML um, and integrate that into uh, maybe, you know, how would we integrate that into Contrib, into Drupal 8? How would we integrate that into Drupal 9? Is that even feasible? I mean, some, the question of whether it's feasible for Drupal 9 is, is sort of up in the air because we just have to see how far the spec comes with the, the release cycle of, of Drupal 9. And Larry, when's Drupal 9 coming out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm going to move over there. <laughs> A, a use case? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the, I mean, we use templates throughout Drupal all over the place, and the the idea is basically that that um, having a sort of native HTML implementation of it would be much faster, um, um, just a better way. But it's basically it would work identical to uh, you know whether we, we are going to be using Twig, or you know that we are currently using PHP template, where we just um, we you can uh, actually um, I saw a really interesting demo uh, last week where um, Chris Weber is he in here um, he showed me how he got Drupal 8's um, rest API um, and he built a web component that pulled out data uh, JSON data out of the the rest API or something like that and um, then used a web component to actually display a node you know so he like he was editing the node um and using yeah yeah a, a custom element that was like a node uh web component yeah um i th yeah i think that the there are is namespacing in web components does anybody know the spec a little bit better and knows Definitively, that that's true. I can't imagine that there wouldn't be namespacing, yeah, because just make a, a Google Drive component yeah. And that component and mm -hmm. gonna... oh, one thing I should point out is that you know we're, they have partial implementation of this in some of the like the Chrome uh, Canary or whatever. But then there's a bunch of libraries here. Um, Polymer and Xtag are sort of the better one. I've never even seen this one until today. Bosonic. Um, but these are JavaScript polyfills that allow you to start playing with uh, web components right now in the browser using a, this JavaScript polyfill. So. Yeah, it looks like uh, the X tag, like X dash tag, uh, is kind of like a play on the standard. I guess they say for best practice, the namespace is basically the dash, right? So it's like X dash tab. Oh, okay. As long as we don't have like PSR one style <laughs> namespaces for our tags, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> I like to troll Larry sometimes too, by the way. That's okay. You actually should talk about PSR zero. PSR one is something else. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Trolling <laughs> fail. <laughs> Troll fail. So it seems like um, I guess it depends on how long it takes to get to Drupal nine, but um, it seems like a polyfill. I mean, for Drupal 8 contrib, definitely yeah, you're going to have to have a polyfill with them for it. But um, so, <coughs> you know, I guess my concern is with, like, if I set up an image slider, I don't know why I would, but if I did, um, and JavaScript fails, right?
right because they lost the connection or something, an error or whatever, they would see like a stack of images, mm -hmm. which would not be great, but they would get to see all the content. What happens if the polyfill fails to load and they have these like non semantic or non valid tags? Uh, well, I mean, as far as non valid tags, the, the HTML spec has been good about that since like HTML whatever you want to do or something. Uh, if a browser does not recognize a tag, it'll still render the content and it'll just be like, I'm going to keep this like a, I think it's a span or a div, one of the two. I'm not even sure because there's a lot of them. I think it's like a span. Basically, it's just the, it's no sound at all for the, the element that it does recognize. Um, yeah? Do you think this way people have a chance to compile this type of fast and 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 fast
something front end understands that either it's a gallery element or the class gallery. So that bridge can be formed there either with big extent, maybe with more direct component integration, but yes, there is a bridge to be formed between Drupal knows this is a node of type gallery. The browser doesn't care it's a node of type gallery. It cares if it's a class gallery or something else. Let me go back there and look at that detail. So, let's say it's Drupal that looks at that and sees that. I will post the slides on the site so everyone can get a clear look. So, basically, it's a little bit of 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 a little
it is hard to be like, well, we just did all this work with Twig and you know direct pilot season, but I think they're they're separate. You know? Yeah, yeah, I I, I definitely ag agree with that completely. And, and that, uh, you know, it's a conversation like this is can be very sort of refreshing when you've just been like talking about code and you're trying to implement it now, and I have to go back and like refactor all my code on my projects and and just sort of like thinking about the future, and yet it's not just a pipe dream in that, you know, when we started the Drupal 8 mobile initiative, I knew that I wanted to have, like, responsive images be part of that thing, and there was no way you could do that without polyfills, and it sucks because the JavaScript and that makes implemented in the browser, and we, we helped push along um, in the responsive image images with the Drupal uh, community, and I think putting our effort into that was, was great. Like Chrome in like this fall, August, September is going to have an actual like store set and and um, sizes implementation, um, so you'll be able to have native um, responsive images just like Chrome and, and the other browser system uh, behind them. So, um, talking about what Chrome is thinking about it in the Google sphere, it's, it's not just a pipe dream. It can it can really happen. We can help push it forward. We're a big community.
flag that you have to, or not canary flag, uh, chrome flag that you have to hit in order to see the shadow dom. If you inspect one of those date pickers, native H105 date pickers, you'll actually see the giant markup. Who here has like seen the markup that's output by the calendar module? It's God, it's a lot <laughs> for a calendar because it requires that much, right? So all of that gets encapsulated inside the shadow dom. So if you like right click and inspect that date picker element, you'll see all of that. And then it's just, you know, it's an attribute on one input, right? So it's encapsulated this very complex set of markup inside a very simple wrapper. If you like, sorry, can you just hand it up a bit? <laughs>
did a little bit of research after I talked to Mark uh, yesterday about this, and, and uh, the thing that makes DOM so heavy is if you ever like, create a, an HTML element in the DOM with JavaScript and, and then immediately inspect it, there's like 300 properties on it, and you know, and so anytime you do anything, it's got to create all this all this stuff that's required from like HTML 1.0.
thing is a big plus because that gives you the ability to have uh, modules inject what they want to do with it, but you can also still get the original unmanipulated content. And then also, the fact that since it was on Florian, you've got the whole page structure as part of what the JSON is coming to that. So if you read an individual note, it was all grouped by where it would live if you had pushed stuff into the Drupal structure of, you know, regions and all that sort of thing. It came through that way. So you would get, even though you, you know, you had to go through and do something with the integration and this stuff, you get the structure as part of it. So you could then use that if you built an elaborate enough system on the front end to understand Drupal. It could render the page and still be all dynamic, be completely decoupled, which is what I'm doing now. Uh, and it's awesome because it's so fast. I mean, you don't have any of Drupal's uh, front end doing stuff. You just have Drupal's back end doing it for free. And then on the front end, you have Angular or whatever your Angular or, you know, uh, this Facebook thing is, is cool. I'm reading about the, the contrast. It's, it's, there's slight differences. But I mean, either way, the idea is that you get all that power to do whatever you want. You get your front end code using new stuff that's uh, you know, on fun and relevant. and I mean, it's just, it's a win-win, because Drupal's excellent at structured data. Yeah. As long as they're with you separating content data, so you can, so if you don't try to mix it the presentation layer, it fits with actual content data, so they can maintain that. Yeah, I, I think that we, we try to do a good job of thinking about separating that configuration and, and content. So, um, and, but I, I wanted to get back briefly to your point about um, about, you know, handler people or, or, you know, bridge with them and all that. I, I really feel like they're, they're complementary, um, that, that people can do both, you know, right? That it doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, as long as we can do both of them well. Right. If, if with the auditorium and a uh, system like that, you could just, if you wanted to, you could pass everything to the front end and let the front end do its thing, or you could also integrate uh, your MVC stuff on the fly. I mean, I'm looking at the web components and then the whole time I'm just like, okay, this is just exactly what Angular is going to block. You know, you don't need to deal with pod build. You can load Angular and then you can say, okay, I want to get this JSON screen and I want to populate this box with this stuff. And you can use custom tags. They're directed in Angular. And they encapsulate different functionality for you. You don't have to keep rewriting it. You use one tag and it all goes in and it can be fed data from an object and this does work with it. It's beautiful. You know what I just thought of? Um, because I was thinking about what you were talking about, the, how you're using you know, a completely decoupled system. Um, and I was on the project recently where they tried to start doing that, but then the, because of the project requirements and, and deadlines and you know the more and more features that, that the, were required by the client, um, it became too easy to just like install you know, a module that does that thing. And because of the Google module, it outputs HTML, right? So it became they, there was a you know small layer of, of Angular on it, and then like they kept adding features like oh well we, we got all, it's already done except for some CSS, and it's like oh do we have to try to figure out how to re-implement it as we JSON? We the opposite was true. We wrote these fewer modules. Well, yeah, I, that's what I was thinking. I was like you would have to use fewer we modules. We use the almost no modules in right. the core, but and it was you know and then on the front end we used more pure Angular, and it's super streamlined. But, but what, what I was thinking of is then is that so we've got these features down in Google 7 that are, you know, modules. Um, what would it look like as far as trying to create functional, um, you know, like having, I don't even know if module is the right word, you know, some, some packaged front end component, you know, web component, like functionality, like what, how would that look like? I mean, is there a Drupal integration that's required for that, or would it be just you know, like pure web component distributed package that would implement certain functionality? Yeah, that would want really to like like a shopping cart or something? Or? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. so uh, there's a JavaScript implementation of Twig, so I, I want to put aside the idea that there's a choice to be made between Twig or front end rendering. Uh, I think an ideal would be uh, our Twig templates are written in a way so that the Twig template itself doesn't know or care if it's being rendered through PHP compilation or JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, I, th that's easy for 
me to say, I have no idea uh, how we actually ensure that our trade templates so can be rendered. The, the only bit about that is, is like custom uh, filters, have, right. like filters and I think it's in functions. Right, it's in the filters and functions. Mm -hmm. um, and today I'm writing a PHP switch function to do entity embedding. Well, that's PHP side, if that switch template with the entity embed function were rendered on JavaScript, JavaScript would have no idea. So yes, there is work to be done to ensure that JavaScript and PHP both know how to handle the same quick functions. Um, but that's, that is one way we could get to the place of uh, this module, which either ships with this quick template or says it needs some third-party quick template, doesn't need to know where it's there if that rendering is happening server-side or client-side. Okay. How much time have we got left? I've just been talking and talking and talking. We've got like five minutes. So we got five more minutes.